Hi guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to get on the uh, magneto for the F7 Kawasaki. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean that thing up and try to get the new... Uh, I want to put just new sheathing on, but we may have to put wires on too. Some of them are looking pretty bad and uh, it's, you know, if you, if you don't do it right, then... Uh, there's no reason to do it at all. So I'm, I'm gonna get that sheathing off, take a look at it, and if it looks like I can do it. You know, the, the problem you run into is that uh, if you cut much wire off, and one wire I see I'm probably gonna have to, uh, you may not get them hooked back up on the bike from the wiring harness. You know, they give you, a, uh, there's enough there that you could you can kind of cut them off and put them back on maybe once, but you sure don't want to, you know, go through all the work and then try to put it on the bike and it, it's not long enough to, to hook up. So we're going to have to kind of do some research and if I can get it done, because usually it's just the, the sheathing that's the problem, but I do see one wire that needs uh, a little more cut off than I, what I want to. So we'll just want to, we'll see what it looks like when I get everything uh, kind of tore apart. So let me get you overhead, show you what I've done already. Uh, basically, all I've done is take the coils off the stator. I want to I want to take the stator over, freshen it up in the bead blaster, and then we'll kind of put part of it back on, uh, primarily so we can hold it, and then start getting the sheathing off. Okay, I've got this, uh, got it off of the, the plate, and this just, uh, you know, I don't know whether that's mouse doo-doo or what, but it just, it's unsightly, so we're gonna, we're gonna do something about it. And I was able to get all the screws out but one, and this one, it just is really bent. I don't know what the deal was with that, but I had to get uh, vice grips to get that thing out. I'm lucky that I got it out, to tell you the truth. I, uh, you know, if you break them off, then as small as they are, they're a real issue. So at least I was lucky in that concern. So I was looking at the ends here and see this yellow wire with the green tracer? That one's broke right here. And, you know, I, I want to be able to cut them up as high as I can. This may be okay. But we'll just kind of see here. It looks like the only one. And actually, I don't know, it looks like maybe there's a tape repair here. So we don't know what's under there yet. But, you know, it's, uh, most of these wires are uh, spliced in right here. And we can do that again. Uh, you just you know, carefully remove this uh, material that's on here, untie it. Uh, I mean, you're not gonna tie it back on. You're gonna probably use a zip tie or something. But we've got, uh, you had two wires here that you've got to dig into the compound. I usually use a, a soldering iron for that. I can just kind of melt it and chip it out of there and then unsolder them and change them. So it's not a big deal but you do have to be careful. And I do see that a little metal sticking out of this one, so it, it needs some uh, insulation on it. So we're, we're probably just gonna rewire it. You know, that's, that's the right thing to do. And what I'll end up doing is uh, uh, probably gonna heat the, the uh, sheathing and then take a razor blade and cut it. It, if you heat it, it uh, softens it up so the razor blade uh, cuts it a lot easier. And then we'll, uh, we'll make us a map of all these, otherwise showing uh, this is a female single plug, this is a double plug female, and so on and so forth, so we know how to get them all back on there. So that's the first thing we need to do. And uh, that way, you know, we, we're assured that we can get everything back on, 
uh, back where they need to be. But first thing I'm going to do is take this piece over and bead blast it, try to get it looking good again, and then we'll start on this stuff. All right, guys, made my map. So I've got all of uh, what color the wires are, whether they're male or female, or in this case, a double female. And up here on this, this is my uh, rubber connection. And I've got it marked uh, which ones are female and which one's male and what colors go to them. And then down here, I've got the coils marked so I know which, which ones go to here where they splice in because some of these colors on the lighting coil are different than, than the ones that come down that splice in here. And if I have to uh, rewire this, I've, uh, I, I really don't have the proper wires. It seems like all these bikes are a different, uh, you know, I've got, uh, I've got a blue and white here, and I'll have to use a white and a blue. And uh, let's see what else was there. The yellow and green. I don't have that, so I'll probably have to use a yellow and black. Uh, no, I forgot to dig that one out. The red, I believe I've got something Let's see, that's, that's uh, white with red. There we go, I got that one. That's pretty a popular one. I don't have a lot of it left. So I, I think I've got, and then all the, the rest, the solid wire colors are usually pretty easy. I've, I've got some rolls of that. So I should, I should be okay on those. But you just can't, you know, that's, that's another thing that you just... Uh, you can't go looking for all the time. Uh, it'll take me a week to get it. And, uh, you know, I've, I've got a source where I can get all this uh, striped wire. But, you know, just make, it, make do and you write down what that wire was and what you used. And you shouldn't have trouble uh, getting things hooked up. And uh, here we got the plate. Pretty well clean back up so that's good to go so what I'm at now is uh, I'm to the point where I need to go ahead and start heating this up so I can see if I can get it off of there and we'll see whether or not we're gonna need to rewire it you know if you find find that you just heat this up a little bit it makes it a lot easier to uh, get a razor blade in there and uh, cut it. And usually when it's brittle, if you just kind of scar it, you can almost cut it. Just like that. It'll pull off. And this, I found out, wasn't a piece of tape. This was, uh, they just bundled it together there. This is one of those uh, shrink deals, I think, kind of like shrink wrap. So let me work on the rest of this uh, sheathing, and we'll see where we're at then. I found sometimes, too, if you've got enough room, you can get, I use these medical scissors. Again, you heat that up first, and... These are less apt to cut another wire because you can kind of feel if you've got more in there than just a wire. So that works. You can just kind of chip away at it. I also wanted to mention that before I tore into anything, I uh, took some pretty good pictures just to kind of back my drawings up. And it, it kind of lets you know where you're, you know, how the, the uh, sc screws mount and how the cables are mounted on, or I mean the 
coils are mounted on the plate. It just do whatever you can do to uh, to just ensure you get everything back together the way it's supposed to. It'd be a shame to go through all this and then have to uh, troubleshoot your wiring. Okay, that's all that except for under the clamp there. And it also shows the location of your, of this little block that goes in the side case there. And you got to remember that it's got to go on before you put your terminals back on. So, let's see here. I can go ahead and get that piece off there. Doesn't take long to heat it up. Just makes it so much easier. I, this stuff really is feeling pretty flexible. So I, I'm kind of thinking I'm probably going to be able to use it. It just needs to be cleaned. You know, all that oil and uh, grit that's in there. So I'll be doing that. Uh, I've got, got all these marks. So I can go ahead and uh, cut these. And if you need any connectors, uh, I use vintageconnections.com. They've got all the proper connections, these rubber ones too. Most of the time you can reuse these, at least the rubber part. This one is feeling kind of hard, so I think I'm probably going to replace it. But you don't want to cut it down here because that's not where it's, uh, uh, it's, that's not where you cut the least amount off. You're going to have to, uh, you just pull these out. You can usually grab them and twist them a little bit. And see there you, you've got your, this way you're a lot further up. And these usually are the same. Just get in there and twist them and pull them out a little bit. There. So those, I'll probably use a new rubber connector shell. That one, like I say, it's getting kind of hard. Of course, the one that's on the, the uh, bike is, you know, on the wiring harness probably is too. But uh, vintage connections have that all your wiring connectors they've got the wire too i actually use um, <clears throat> it's a 4r custom wire uh, number four and r custom wire uh, they they have all this uh, this type wire in any color you want and you know i thought i had all the colors i'd ever need after you know, I, I've been doing this a while, and you still don't. So it's, that's just the way it is. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I think I can go ahead and start popping these terminals off the end. I've got my map. Let's see, is that, yeah, that's all right. And this is the one that's a little further down. I'm going to try it. So I, if you can keep these things, if you, you've still got some telltale sign, if you uh, messed up on your map or something like that, you'll still be able to get it done. Boy, that thing, I guess it's hard to. There, okay, yeah, it's just a little short sleeve to keep everything together and we'll go ahead and pull all these wires go through this block so we can get that off 
and now I'll go ahead and start cleaning this and one thing that I found that really cleans these wires nice is your like your hand citrus cleaner I've got what they call fast orange it's got the you know pumice in it and it really does work pretty good you just kind of got to do each wire uh, some of the wires be careful because it might pull the color off of you know your stripe but you can see that works pretty good I just hate that greasy feel and you can see here after I clean my wires I'm using my picture to uh, to get my wiring right as far as where it goes and the proper position on the on the plate and you can see the wires running right here I've got them right down here every all the wires run under there and the uh, neutral wire comes out at the top up here okay just about got it here I had to order the one screw that was uh, messed up but I've got a little bit shorter one here I can just kind of get it all attached with and uh, we'll see when that comes in I've had quite a bit of other stuff I had to order too so that looks a lot better on there and I think we're going to be able to get by with just uh, doing the uh, sheathing and I had also you got to chase these holes too because usually they're pretty tight coming out so it's a good thing to chase them make sure everything's uh, clear out of there so you can tighten those bolts up screws up without uh, breaking them off or stripping them or whatever so we've got the ground here the ground here and uh, everything else should be okay the only one I've got to get back on there is the uh, the neutral wire okay then we measure our new sheathing here probably about right there it's going to be kind of hard getting it up through there but it can be done you just got to stay with it I'm just about out the other end so I can pull it with a pair of pliers if I have to. Okay, yeah, I'm just, just coming out the other end now. And we just need it up here far enough, just about like that, so we can get our our clamp right here it's going to go like that and I've got just about what I had before out here on this end so I will be able to start putting my terminals back on but I got to make sure I get this block up there first sometimes you got to get you a punch or something to get in there to line those clamps up for your screw okay 
So our next task is going to be getting this this thing back up there, and that is not going to go easy. I don't think. Probably going to have to use some some lubricant of some sort to get it heading up that way. It just barely will take all those wires. And then we're going to put the sheathing over that. Probably going to have to try to kind of tuck that in. Well, let's see what I can get done with it. Okay, and this is taking some Got to slicken it up with some Ruglide or soap and water or something. It's a pretty small hole compared to there. Can't remember exactly where that was. I don't know if that shows up in my picture or not. So I'll. It'll just be a, a fit. You know, lay it in there and see where it, how it fits. And I guess I, I've got it sitting right here so I can do that. I believe that it goes right down here. So that will fit there, that kind of goes up into there, and that will go there, so we can go in a little bit more. Just a little more. I think it goes like that, and then you get this little bracket that uh, goes back here behind the sprocket. Where is that thing? Right here. So that where does that go? Thought it went down here. Yeah, I bet this comes down like this. And then so that goes down and then back up. Is that what it does? Yeah. That's must be, a, I know it's from around down here somewhere, so I bet that's how it goes. We'll see when we get it back to the bike, but I think we're good here. So these are the three wires that go into the rubber connector. So first thing I need to do is get my little piece of shrink wrap back on there. Remember that was on there to Hold it together just behind the connector. So it'll go right about in there. We'll shrink that up after we get it done. And uh, right now we'll just trim that. And here's the rubber connectors. So you need not that one need that one, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, this is the other side that would go there. So that one there is the one we need here. And we'll need two female and one male there. Those are the same as the regular bullet connectors that come in the kit. This is the Vintage Connections. You can go to vintage, vintageconnections.com 
they're out of Oregon. I'm not affiliated with them or anything. They just have a good product. This stuff all looks factory. So if you're looking for the original type connectors, even for some of the Japanese cars, it's the same. If you're working on a, like a Datsun or something like that. So you've got your, you gotta have your crimper and you gotta be able to strip them. And everything else that you need is right here in this kit. Okay, on the, on the black, or on this one here, our uh, black, or I mean white and red, was our male, and it went right here. And then the, looking at the top of it, the black would be over here. I always draw my connections where I'm looking at the top of them. And then the blue goes over there. <clears throat> so you can get those through and then you can put your connections on and then pull them back down in there. Okay, so the this one here, the red, the white with the red tracer, is going to get the mail. I usually just get them set up in here. And then put my wire in there. I think I need a little bit more. Just a little. And there's that. It's crimped. And then I'll get these other two on. And once you've got those crimped, I like to solder them too. It's double security. Okay. Then you just pull these back into it. Sometimes you might need to kind of get it started. And then you can just pull those back down in there. Just like that. And then we'll take our little shrink wrap thing there. And then on our blue and white one, that's our double. So you'll make sure you get your, 
your insulator back there, and then your double connector or terminal. Okay, and again, we'll solder those. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on and uh, the rest of these are single bullets, either male or female. Those crimped on and soldered on. And hopefully I've got all the insulators on. The, uh, that was the uh, neutral wire. That was the only male out of the loose wires. Okay, so there's our, all our new connectors and our new sheathing. And we were able to do it without replacing wires. It looks like we're gonna have plenty of room there. I just, uh, uh, you know, you just gotta check before you do it to make sure you are. And at this point, really all I've got left to do is just kind of look over. I've got a couple of shiny spots here. I'm going to put some uh, uh, insulation compound on, and then I, as soon as I get my other screw in, we'll be good to go there. Got my red insulating varnish here. That's what these, what this stuff's for. You know, there's. Probably some clear stuff out there, but this is what I've got. And if you've got any spots that are a little bit questionable as far as uh, whether or not you've got a wire sticking out somewhere, you just paint that on there and it will take care of it. I think that was it. So there you go. There's our reconditioned. I really thought I was gonna have to tear some of it apart, but the wire was actually pretty flexible in there. And we went from, from all this junk to this. Plus our new sheathing that's nice and flexible and no, no holes. Really, it was just, uh, it wasn't a bad job. Probably took me uh, an hour, that's about it. And uh, I'll, I'll even be able to go ahead and put this in. And when that screw comes in in a week or so, I'll, I'll be able to change it out with it installed. Just go ahead and get this stuck in here. Again, some new hardware. And uh, I've got the timing mark lined up. And we've got just this uh, little neutral wire. Okay, I think that grommet's seen better days. It's probably supposed to have a piece in here too. So what I may do is glue that in with a little bit of uh, weather strip adhesive. It may stay, but there we go. That looks pretty good, doesn't it?
Now all we've got to do is uh, get our screw in. Uh, I've got some of those, but I think uh, that's a, this is a 35 millimeter long one on this side and a 30 on this side. And all I've got are 30s. So I'm just a little bit short. So that should be coming in in a week or so. Okay guys, I had to go look at the video to see how this bracket went, this for the, for the uh, wiring harness. And looks like that's how it goes right there. So if anybody's got a question, that's how it was on this one anyway when I uh, took it apart. Okay, I just did a trial fit here and everything looks good. Uh, what I did was I made the sleeve for the uh, dowel pan back here so I can use this later model uh, cover. And uh, everything is looking good there. So let's see here. All that comes off. It, it, I thought it was messed up at first. But you've got to put these on in sequence. It's like maybe, you know, they're a little bit tapered right here. And if you don't put this piece on first, then it doesn't, it won't work. But you can see here is the little sleeve I put in here. And that's, I just, I just spun that out of a little piece of tool steel I had. Uh, actually, it's stainless steel. <clears throat> and uh, it just goes right over this one. For some reason, this one was bigger than the old one. So I assume that they have uh, uh, a bigger dowel pan back here on the later models. I'm not sure what this one came off of. It's been several years since I picked it up. But if you if you put it all on the way it the way it's supposed to be, you know, this piece first, then everything works as it should. Anyhow, this uh this one was broke out. Of course it's split here. I'm gonna try to repair this. But this one uh is larger, or this one is smaller than this one. But now they're both the same size with this sleeve in here. And that, that was, uh, it was pretty uh, tedious to make because it's so thin walled. But everything's working as it should. And we've got like the little rubber block there is in the way it should be. This is the way it should be. And uh, I've got a new sprocket coming. I thought I had one. There's a new back sprocket on the bike. And I just assumed I had one for the front, but I cannot find it. Uh, they actually are the same as the Yamaha Suzuki and uh, you know, all those with a 428 chain. But uh, as far as the splines go, the Kawasaki seems to need this little uh, insert here. It doesn't go over the, the Yamahas and the Suzukis go over the splines to lock them. This is not the right washer for here. The uh, I've got one of those coming too. This is a the uh, uh, crankshaft on the other side washer. I've got had an extra one of them, but uh, you know the one for this side, I believe, looks just like it, except the hole's smaller here. So that is on the way also, and I was able to find uh, a new short shaft for the uh, clutch rod. So. In a week or so, all that stuff should hit, and uh, I, can, I can finish up the bottom end, but for right now, uh, this is all we can do. Uh, 
will be getting to the cylinder at some point to uh, go ahead and bore that. But uh, I think I'm probably going to get back on the Yamaha 250 MX and finish up the frame mods to that and uh, you know just work on something different for a little while. So there we are all buttoned back up and everything fits just fine. So we'll be getting uh, getting the getting to the the cylinder here that'll probably be the next thing on this bike and uh, whatever we can do to to finish up the other side. Uh, I don't know whether I'll put the carb in there or whatever uh, before we put it in the frame, but uh, really just pretty much done on this side. I did find some Yamaha grommets that worked good in here. They're maybe a little big uh, hole, but at least they're new and not all falling apart. So we've got our new wiring. So everything's looking a lot better than it, than it was when we started. Okay guys, there you have it. Um, got all our wiring redone. Looks 100% uh, better was able to use most of, uh, well, all the original wires. It, it appears that we're, we've got enough length there to do it. Uh, if, if we don't, then my uh, estimation wasn't very good. But most of the time you can do that if you don't have to cut too much off, you know, off the wires. But uh, we're looking pretty good on this. Got just a couple little things to finish up. Then we'll get to the top end and uh, uh, at some point, probably, I don't know, in the spring, we'll go ahead and get the engine back in the frame. And of course, you know, once you get the engine in there, then it kind of leads to uh, uh, seeing if it'll run. And that's always an exciting time. So hey, thanks for going along on the ride. See you next video.